Hidden in a fold of Kent countryside, just 30 miles from London, is the home of Britain's wartime leader, Winston Churchill. Casting his mind back over five bloody and uncertain years, he would write that during the war, only one thing ever frightened him, the U-boat peril. Battles might be won or lost, Churchill wrote, but our power to fight, to keep ourselves alive, rested on the outcome of the struggle for control of the Atlantic. It was one of the longest campaigns in naval history, bitterly fought over three million square miles of hostile ocean. When it began, the U-boat didn't seem to be a peril at all. And yet, within 18 months, it was able to take Britain to the brink of defeat. In 1942, this battle for survival was at its height. Those lost fighting it have no grave. There are only names. This series remembers their war. At a little before midnight on October the 13th, 1939, a lone U-boat slipped through the line of sunken ships that guarded the entrance to one of the Royal Navy's most important bases. U-47 was about to attempt what the British believed impossible, an attack on the fleet in the safety of its anchorage at Scapa Flow. Its commander, Gunter Prien, kept a log of his mission. There are warships anchored in shore. We close to a distance of some 3,000 meters. We will attack the big one. She was the 30,000 ton Royal Oak, the flagship of the second battle squadron. That night, the Oak was at anchor at the eastern end of the floor. Most of her crew, 1,200 men and boys were asleep below. Suddenly, without any warning at all, there was an enormous explosion right up forward somewhere. Uh, it shook the ship from end to end. And uh, I hopped out of my hammock, and I told them all to get out and get dressed, and they just sort of leaned over their hammock and said, um, ah, don't worry about it. We were talking, saying, you know, what the dickens was that? Somebody thought it sounded like an anti-aircraft gun, but nobody really knew. One of Preen's torpedoes had hit the oak, close to the anchor chain. Her captain thought it was a small internal explosion and that there was no need to rouse the crew. Two out of every three men on that ship only had 12 minutes to live, and they didn't know it. Right, slow, Preen fired three more torpedoes. The ship seemed to jump out of the water, you know. It was an enormous explosion. The last one set off the Cordite magazine, and this blast orange blast came up through the deck and I, I wondered how long it took you know to die and um, excuse me a moment <coughs> brings back a lot of memories there was a terrible roaring and cracking columns of water and fire Fragments were flying through the air. One battleship sunk, every tube empty. I decided to leave. You have to admit, it was an incredible achievement for Preen and his boat, with all the great difficulties of navigation he faced. He managed to get into Scapa Flow and then get out again. On the oak, most of the crew were trapped between the decks as the ship began to capsize. <laughs> 